Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'm going over some of my favorite Reactor user library ensembles. Today I'm showcasing Antonio Blanca's Node-E, which is a generative sequencer. If you all like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with one or two new Reactor tutorials every week. Alright, so node E, first of all, you need to have the play button on. You see it's off right now and no notes are being triggered. And as soon as we turn it on, we can hear some notes. So the first part of this ensemble to kind of grab your attention is this area right here with the eight boxes moving around in it. And the movement of these boxes is going to cause the triggering of our MIDI notes and the exact speed and direction that the boxes are moving in is controlled by this area right here. Um, we have a bunch of different controls to work with and at first it can be a little confusing um, and almost random seeming but as we'll see in just a second it's actually uh, pretty simple. Okay, so we have two LFOs, and one is going to control the movement of these boxes along the x-axis, and the other is going to control the movement of the boxes along the y-axis. And to get a clear view of how this works, I'm going to turn the variation all the way down. We have the frequency of both LFOs set to the same speed, and I'll also turn the um, phase for the y oscillator down. So you see that these boxes are now moving identically. And the only difference is there's a slight variation in the X position of each box. That's caused by the phase X knob here. So if we turn that all the way down, all the boxes are now in the same position um, because we have the same frequency for each LFO. They're just moving in a straight line up and down. So by using the fade knobs, sliders, we can spread out along, along the X and Y axis to get a more dynamic pattern which are still kind of boring and predictable, so we can use the Variation X and Variation Y sliders to add a little bit more randomness. I'm not sure if it's actually technically random. Um, I think it's probably not, actually, but um, it, it certainly looks that way when you're looking at it. And finally, we have the amplitude modulation for each of the LFOs. And this will kind of give you some... Um, more circular patterns sometimes and just overall will give you a much less predictable shape to your patterns. And finally at the bottom we have the overall frequency knob which controls the frequency of both the X and Y LFOs at the same time. So that's how we control the movement of these boxes. Now let's talk about how to trigger notes. You see this kind of green square um, inside the movement area um, and the movement of the boxes either inside or outside of this range is going to um, cause us to trigger notes. So if we look at the um, mode um, selector down here, there's a couple of different things that we can use. So right now we have outside on. Um, so whenever these boxes move outside of the green box in the center, we will trigger a note. You can hear that happening right now. And you have the option to change it so that they only trigger on the left or right side of the box, or only when they are inside the box as well. So the top upper left hand corner decides which notes are triggered um, when we're triggering a note. So each box has its own note. Um, that you can control with these sliders here. And you can go up to a range of three octaves from your bass note. And you can select a scale to be in. Um, you can use the random key here to choose uh, a new group of random notes, which is very helpful actually. And you can actually set which boxes will trigger notes at the bottom here by turning them on or off. So right now, none of these are going to trigger notes. Now only two will. And you see the other ones are kind of um, grayed out in a way. Okay, so let's look at some of the other modes for a second for triggering notes. Um, 
We can turn it so that they are triggering whenever they're inside the green box. And you'll see that the boxes kind of fill up whenever they're um, triggering a note and that they're hollow whenever they're off. And if you want to change the size of the green box, we have these two sliders at the bottom left hand corner here. This can give you a uh, more control and more dynamic patterns. And we can control the velocity of the triggered notes in this section right here using the minimum and maximum velocity settings. You'll see that kind of is visually displayed at the top here as well. And finally, we have the option to restart the sequence at a certain point in time. So you need to click the restart button here, choose a number, and then click set. And you'll see this um, little black uh, line here kind of showing you how far through the sequence we are and whenever it gets back to the top the sequence restarts. Alright, so that's the basics of using Node E. Um, by default it comes with an instrument and an ensemble version. So the instrument version you want to use to um, control other reactor instruments. And the ensemble version is just the instrument version um, with it pre-connected to a copy of one of the factory reactor synths, Steampipe 2. So you can connect this to any reactor synth. And I'll just take a moment to show you how. First, make sure you're in edit mode up here, and then travel into the structure view and add the instrument that you want to control with Node E. Uh, I'm just going to use a um, simple Sound School analog synth here. So I'll delete the steam pipe and connect the Sound School in its place. And next, so select the instrument, go to the Connect tab in Properties, find the um, From Internal Instruments menu, and select Node E. All right, so that's how to use Node E. If you guys like this tutorial, please check out our website at reactortutorials.com. We have a ton of content up. If there's anything that you'd like to see a tutorial on, please just let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a video for you as soon as possible. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you again next week.